Hi, this is Francis from Easel. Today we're going to be talking through importing a 3D STL file and setting up that carve and just kind of some of the options that are available and the different cut styles and kind of what that looks like. Um, so I'm going to start by uh, going up here, click on import an STL file. I'm going to import uh, this STL file right here. And so now that my uh, STL file is imported, we can see um, a couple of different lines have appeared um, on the design. One is this purple line. And if we look at it from specific angles, it looks like it's cutting through our material. Uh, that's not the case at all. Uh, it's actually just, if we go down to the bottom here, a purple line that's indicating uh, the boundary of our model or the size of our model in relation to our material. Um, it looks like it's cutting through just because we have that visual um, so we can kind of see the boundary of our model in relation to uh, our work area and our material. Our material is uh, shown by this green box here. So we've got uh, these green lines. It's three-dimensional, so we can see how high our material is in relation to our model. Um, and we can, when we make adjustments to our material size, this green box will adjust as well. Um, so the first thing I'll kind of point out, and something we see relatively commonly with uh, um, STL file imports is uh, if you're looking at it from the side, you can see that my model sticks up above my material dimensions. Um, and so when I imported, my material dimensions um, weren't high enough to kind of fit my model. Uh, if I generate the toolpath for this model, we can see that um, anything that's above the green box is not going to be carved. We can see that here if we're looking at it from the side. Nothing above this green box is going to be um, carved. Uh, we can look at the finishing too. So none of that gets carved and so will be kind of eliminated from the carve. And so we run the carve, but it misses a whole bunch of things. Um, so um, how do we fix that? Well, the first thing we can do is adjust our material size. I'm going to adjust it slightly to be one inch thick instead of half an inch, or excuse me, instead of half an inch thick. Uh, and if we look at it from the side, now we're getting quite a bit of the model, but we're still missing some. So I've adjusted the material size, and you can increase the material size again to, to adjust the full model. But in this case, I'm going to adjust the size of my model. And I do that here. Uh, it says size, and then we can adjust it on the X and the Y. We can lock that so that when we adjust it, it adjusts proportionally. And we can adjust the Z. Uh, in this case, I'm not going to adjust the Z. Um, I'm not going to adjust the Z uh, in t proportionally with everything else. I'm just going to adjust it uh, on its own, and I'm going to make it 0.75. And so that's adjusted the thickness of my model um, down from uh, what was essentially 1.3 inches down to uh, 3 quarters of an inch. And that now fits inside the bounds of my material. Um, and again, you can adjust that size here however you want. Uh, you can also rotate your model. Um, we'll keep it at zero. Uh, and then you can also adjust the uh, orientation. So if it uploads and it's upside down, you can just adjust the orientation and that'll fix that. Um, the other thing to mention is this position here. And so it's, it's on the X, it's 0.6. On the Y, it's 0.869 and then on the Z at zero. So if we look at it from the side, my model is sitting at the bottom of the material. So it's um, sitting at the zero point. Uh, on the X and Y, it's sitting at 0.6 on the X and then 0.869 on the Y. And we can see that right here. If we were to adjust something like this on the X, it would move my model over that much. Um, so you can adjust the positioning there. You can also just click center to material and that'll center your model on your material. Um, the only other thing that I'll mention is you can adjust the where the model sits on the Z and I'm gonna do that here by clicking into the Z position and changing it to 0.25. So now it's moved up a quarter of an inch and my uh, model is uh, now sitting at the top of my material instead of at the bottom. Now we can kind of get into the cut styles. There are three cut styles that you can choose from. Uh, the first is a full depth cutout using tabs. This is essentially going to cut out your object. So when it's done, you'll just have your 3D model uh, completely cut out. Um, the next is a rectangle relief. And what this does is it sets a cut depth for the carve and then provides padding around it in the shape of a rectangle. And so it'll cut out your model 
but it'll also cut out a square around it to give you kind of like a, a border around it. Um, and so um, a couple things to note here. First, there is a cut depth, and that cut depth is indicated by this gray uh, kind of square that has appeared. If we look at it from the side, that gray square is intersecting my model, um, and there's kind of a portion that's lighter above it and then a portion that's a little darker below it. Everything that's lighter is going to be carved. Anything below that or in the dark, darker section is not going to be carved at all. So we want to adjust that to carve uh, part of my model. So I'm going to change it here to, we'll try point 0.6, Oop, not point point six, point six. And now we can see that it's um, got like, a, uh, it's all kind of brightly colored. We can look at it from the side and it's still intersecting my model, but in this case, that's okay. That's how I want it. Um, the only other thing to mention is that now there's also padding to think about. And padding is the size of the rectangle around our model. So how much outside of this purple square is there uh, going to be a rectangle around my object? In this case, that's shown by this orange box. Um, that's a little too big given my material, so I'm going to adjust it to 0.5 all the way around. Um, and you can do this individually, so if you have a certain like dimensions on the left and right versus the um, back and front, you can adjust those all individually. Uh, now we can see that my orange rectangle is within the bounds of my material. If I generate this toolpath, <clears throat> we'll see that instead of just carving out the model, we're now going to see that um, on the roughing pass, it's, it's actually just going to be a rectangle, and then the finishing pass is going to focus on my model. The final uh, cut style that we have available is model boundary relief. This is very similar to rectangle relief, except instead of creating a rectangle around my material, it's just going to cut out my material to, or cut out my design to a specific depth. Uh, it's not gonna call it the way through, it's just gonna cut around the bounds of the model to a specific depth. Um, you can add padding to that, so you can create a little extra space around the model if you want to. Um, but it, it's really just going to cut around the model, and we can generate that toolpath and visualize that here. So uh, there's my model, and then there's a little extra kind of on the edges here um, that are uh, kind of indicative of uh, a model boundary relief. Um, and then the only other thing to kind of talk through is the finishing toolpaths. By default, it's going to be on x-axis, so if we go to the finishing, it's going to move, the bit's going to move along the x-axis as it's uh, kind of traveling. We can adjust this to 45 degrees. If I generate this toolpath, now my finishing bit is going to move at an angle across my material instead. And you can do that on the y-axis, and that'll move up and down, or 135, and that's going to move in, in a different uh, kind of direction, di diagonally across the material. Um, and that's just kind of a quick explanation of uh, 3D carving, the cut styles, how to orient your model, everything like that. Have a wonderful day. To learn more, head over to easel.com.